Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Edge 2016. Brought to you by IBM. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to IBM Edge, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Dr. Stephanie Chiris is here. She is the Vice President of Power Systems Offering Management at IBM. Yeah. I know I'm probably leaving some things out of there. I could throw in cloud, I guess. Right. Uh, but welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, and thank you very much for having me back. Good to yeah. see you, yeah, the CUBE alum, that's great. Yes, I yes, didn't have the opportunity to, to interview you. But that's right, but Stu and John I have met before. Stu. Yeah, happy to be back. Great, so uh, you were telling us you're prepping for the main tent tomorrow. Yes, yes. What are you going to talk about? Tent. So tomorrow we get an opportunity to talk a bit about, really tomorrow is all about the individual, right? The power of the individual to have impact in today's IT world between you know, the access to infrastructure has changed dramatically through things like cloud. Um, and so the ability for individuals to impact the industry, right, um, and their company, as well as just the world is, is better than ever, right? So we talked, I know you spoke to uh, Jason Ponton, mm. right? And I'll be having the innovators under 35 with me up there to kind of demonstrate, right, what an individual can do to really change the industry. Oh, that'll be fun. So, yeah, be so great. what are you guys going to talk about? Give us a little preview without yeah, well, showing too much. We get a bit about their personal stories, right? And I think we're all driven by our personal stories and our passions. And so they get a chance to talk about their innovations and I'll get a chance to talk about why why I do infrastructure, right? Which is my passion. So it's kind of nice. Passion and infrastructure. Yeah, so, absolutely. So that, that's cool. So power used to be kind of this boring marketplace, right? And then Not all of anymore. a sudden open power happened. Yeah. And uh, how did that change your, your life? Your, yeah, no, it, it, it's a whole new power systems today. Really with the launch of Power 8, which coincided with the launch of Open Power Systems, right. it's a different ball game for us. I have responsibility in power systems for the Linux portfolio. And we, we changed our approach to Linux when we launched Power 8. We came out with the ability to support Big Endian and Little Endian in the processor, which made us much more relevant in the broader Linux ecosystem. We also focused on open power, so an incredible focus on creating an ecosystem, not just at the software level, but all the way down to the hardware level. And, you know, and, and we're up to over 250 members now. Uh, and that's a, helped us expand our ISV ecosystem. At the end of the day, it is all about ecosystem, and we have over 2,500 now ISVs running on Linux on power. So um, it, it's changed. It's changed dramatically, both our approach and I think also um, how, how Linux is being used by clients has changed dramatically. What was it, a few weeks ago was the 25th birthday of Linux. Yeah, yeah, right. That was kind of exciting. It's, <laughs> a, it's amazing to see how it's grown up. It's grown up from being a, a hobbyist sport, right, to running corporations. Well, uh, I, mean, I, I, I love during the 25th anniversary, yeah. there, was, there was a great tweet that went out. It showed like, you know, all the components of a cake and said like, you know, good luck, make it yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, yeah. here's your cake, yeah. good luck with that. Um, yeah. I, I love that idea of kind of the individual contributor. How yes. much of that is based on open source, things like open power and of course Linux, uh, and, and how much you know, does, does IBM make, how does IBM make it kind of individual beyond kind of open source and community? Yeah, so I think, I think the whole open source and Linux, if, if it's done nothing else, it's taught us that development is done differently and that rapid innovations can be done through a community. Um, and so that was really fundamental to our kicking off open power. As we look at how, how technology has advanced and the end of Moore's law, right, and the challenges in the processor level, it's really about creating a system. And how do you do that? With an ecosystem of partners all across the stack, everything from the processor level all the way up to the application level. And, and so, you know, as we look at how individuals contribute, uh, IBM is a huge proponent of feeding back into the open source community, and the IBMers, you know, are, are, are doing that every day. Um, but then in addition, it's about pulling together the community to find a way that it all pulls together across a system stack to bring value. So the end of Moore's Law, that's, there's some red meat right there yeah. that we can chew on for a bit. Like, yeah. Those fighting words for certain folks. But yep. So where's the innovation coming from? Because, because this industry has marched to the cadence of Moore's Law for, for decades. So where's indeed. the innovation come from? First of all, let's, let's test that. So Moore's Law is the end of Moore's Law. What does that mean to you and what does that mean to IBM? So, so I came from the um, processor level, right? So I did silicon technology for a long time. And, and at the end of the day, it's all about return on investment. And shrinking down, 
a gates at this point to get the return on investment for performance, it, it's not happening right at the same rate that we were used to. So client value is not coming at twice the, per, twice the performance at a client level value just based upon shrinking your gates alone every 18 months. Um, and you know the, um, the commitment that it takes in order to do that and to shrink, it, it's just not going to happen. The laws of physics fundamentally will prevent it. So once the Moore's law meets the laws of physics, physics will win. So now it's about expanding beyond just the processor level and just the silicon. It's about pulling in things like accelerators and accelerator technology. It's about having a breadth of those accelerators in order to feed all the new workloads that are coming in on Linux. But it, it, it's a different ball game today, right? It's not just the processor that will provide a difference, it's, it's essential. So right? It doesn't take away, the architecture is important, but it is about the system and the system stack all the way up to the software that's going to bring client value. And that's what we have to focus on. It's not just about speeds and feeds, it's about client value. So IBM has some street cred here. So you, Stephanie, you weren't even born yet, but Stu, you, you, were, you won't remember, but when IBM moved from ECL to CMOS, that was a big bet. It was a big they, bet. They probably talk about that in the halls of IBM. <laughs> Back in the day, Stephanie, you know, when we used to break the ice and wash our face and walk to school three miles, I'm sure you hear those stories, but that was a huge bet that IBM made that a lot of people thought you know, was foolish on IBM's yeah. part, but it obviously paid off. Um, so what is the bet you're making now? Okay, we, let's, let's agree that Moore's Law is you know, peaking. Mm -hmm. physics, et cetera. So what's the bet on now? Where's the innovation curve? So for power systems, we have focused, and I think you'll see this, both in the recent announcements around Power9 at Hot Chips, but also in our announcements around uh, our recent LC servers, right, called Minsky, the SA22 LC for high performance computing. It's about bringing in I.O. capabilities that allow acceleration to be pulled in differently and tighter, closer to the processor. So um, we have built our processors with I.O. and interfaces to be able to pull an acceleration closer to that processor that can't be done on any other platform. So it's about creating those gateways and those paths for the ecosystem to participate with accelerators. And, and as we look at power in the cloud, we, mm -hmm. I wonder if you can speak to both kind of the, the challenges that you have architecting it and the opportunities that customers get to be able to build new solutions that they can do in the cloud that they, they might not be able to do elsewhere. I think one of the things with, um, with, with the cloud aspect is, you know, we have, um, as you pull in some of these, it's interesting, I think, to see clients as you pull in sort of these new system level architectures, uh, it's different, right? And the benefit of the cloud is it provides simple access to infrastructure that they may not be willing to pull in on-prem. Right, some things like FPGA accelerators, some things like GPU accelerators. There's a lot of use in the cloud because there's not familiarity and experience for an on-prem deployment. So I think cloud brings a new access point in order to access sort of new and emerging technologies. And for on-prem, you know, there, there are lots of bold folks with IT departments that are extremely strong that are pulling, pulling that in, but from an accelerator standpoint, I think it's about allowing simple access to differentiated infrastructure that the cloud provides. I think there was a misnomer. Some people thought, you know, cloud is just going to be cheap, um, and, but you know, it sounds like there's a lot of room for innovation and in trying new and different things the, in the cloud. And, and you know, I think um, there's been a lot of um, a lot of analyst reports around hyperscale data centers that going into the future, they will be the deliverers of of innovation, right? to folks who want to leverage the newest and the latest. So we, um, you know, we just in our recent announcements for the expanded LC portfolio that we had on September 8th, uh, we announced um, some collaborations that we had done with Tencent, right? So Tencent, one of the, one of the biggest telcos right. um, in China, and they deployed uh, using a Spark performance benchmark. And when they did it on power, it was about them creating a, diff, a, a, um, a, using less hardware with better performance, you know, that's them going after a TerraSort benchmark that is different, right, that is different. They will deliver the newest and the best to the public with simplicity of access, right? So I think, I think it is a misnomer. I think, um, I think cloud is really a new access point and I think it will deliver innovation and access to that innovation. So since you brought up China, <laughs> you kind of, with open power, created a monster potentially in, in mm. China. And, and it's interesting, right? So China's becoming self-sufficient. 
doing their own chips. They've got their own version of Linux. Mm -hmm. I always joke, and it's true, by the way, they have their own Wikibon. They have a Wikibon <laughs> China. Where they've basically taken all of our content and translated it, and here it goes. It's open source. That's what happens in open source. Yep. Innovation. Unintended Innovation. consequences. Not necessarily a bad thing. What's IBM's play? With that, you seem obviously very comfortable with it. You, you sort of yeah, I, I, I think up, so. I think China is a unique market. They have made decisions, and they're looking to have domestic innovation, and they have their own innovation agenda within China. And we and we in Open Power through the Open Power, we we will participate, and we will enable them to do that and leverage the best of power architecture to do so. So our partnerships in China are enable are enabled in order to participate in the China market. Open means open. And we will do that. Partially open. That's right. I, I want to go back to something you were talking about earlier about your decision to, to uh, support Little Endian. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a geeky term, but let's explain what that means. Yeah. So from a binary compatibility standpoint, you talked about ISVs. How was that a game changer and what have the results been in the marketplace? Yeah, it, it, it has been essential, right? Um, so, so just to step back on endianness for a moment. Um, so it's really, endianness refers to how you store your data, whether or not you store your most significant digit first or your least significant digit first. And that's something that you want to get right, right? You don't want to mess that up. Um, and and converting at a converting from big Endian to little Endian is not simple, and from an ISV or a porting application, mm -hmm. right? So um, we did it in the hardware. So power in the hardware in the processor can support either big Endian or little Endian. Now the bulk of the ecosystem is little Endian Linux, um, and so when we came out with Power 8, we put that technology into the processor so that we could support little Endian applications. What that means is for scripting languages, those can be just moved over from uh, Little Endian on x86, moved over and run on a power system. So that migration became much, much simpler. Uh, and for a, like a C, C++, a recompile is required, but that will move over with a simple recompile and will run on power. So it was absolutely essential for us to do that in order to participate in the bulk of the, the Linux ecosystem out there. And, um, you know, it's funny, I was with a, a business partner just a couple of weeks ago in, in Denmark, and they've done a lot of work to move um, their software. They have some software that they run, and they moved it over from uh, Little Endian on x86 to Little Endian on power. And I asked myself, so how did that go? And he looked at me like I, w I was crazy, right? He's like, why would you ask that? I'm like, well, we get a lot of mixed, um, we get a lot of mixed views or on, on the thing. He said, absolutely great, absolutely great. I can't even believe you asked the question. So I think, I think that technology shift for us was key. Uh, it has brought simplicity for us to participate in ISVs to leverage power infrastructure underneath their, their code. And, and has, it, has the success been, or where have you had success? Has it been workload specific? across the board? Talk so we, we are very focused and prioritizing in our ecosystem. We, um, we are focused on big data workloads, right? Everything in the Power8 architecture and the Power architecture is built to do data. I mean, you know, our AIX workloads and our IBMI workloads, we, we grew up growing, uh, working on how to do data, right? That's what we do. And now we want to bring that capability to Linux workloads. So we're quite focused on uh, open source databases, we're very focused on analytics. We're very focused on high performance computing. It's those workloads that can leverage the eight threads and the, um, the large cache size and the IO bandwidth that we have and the memory bandwidth. So, you know, we're prioritizing where power can make a difference and we're working on the, and uh, delivering on the ecosystem in order to play in those spaces in particular. So, and how has in memory databases played in, I mean, I don't want to make too big of a deal. Steve Mills used to say, ever since we've had memory, we've had in-memory databases. He's like Bill Parcells. <laughs> don't put him in the Hall of Fame yet. But um, nonetheless, it, in-memory databases have come back in vogue. You know, mm -hmm. memory's cheaper. The, the need for speed, real time, has coincided with all these other technology yeah. you know, trends that we it, see. So it's has all that about, been a tailwind? Or? It's all about getting the data closer, right? You have to get that data closer to the compute. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. So, so clearly, right, we have DB2 Blue. Um, we see have a strong play in SAP HANA. That's been a great play, right? Has the, it? Yeah, the flexibility uh, that, that Power brings to an SAP HANA deployment has been great for us. So um, we, we have great success with clients running SAP HANA on Power. And that's a good business. It's not just the anti-Oracle business, right? I always hear it, everybody talking HANA, 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 but it's, 
really happening in the marketplace. It, it, it's a great business, and SAP, SAP wants it to happen. And, uh, and they're the, making it happen. They're that's, making that's it true. happen. That's absolutely you know, right. They they're, they're making it happen, and and the results are great for clients, right? The the feedback has been uh, outstanding for clients, and Power brings differentiation there from flexibility and from performance. So uh, that has been an incredible play for us. Uh, and in addition, right, capabilities like our CAPI technology, which is our mm. I/O that brings FPGAs and, and acceleration closer in, you can put flash behind that, which you know. Since, since CAPI brings that accelerator into a shared memory space, that brings that very large memory space, right? A little bit slower, but a whole lot cheaper, right? Right into your shared memory space. And you're doing atomic writes, persisting the data, eliminating the horrible storage stack, as we and, like and, to say. And I mean, no I.O. call, right? I mean, right. the savings Best on I.O. is no I.O., as Gene and... Amdahl always said. Another <laughs> guy that you guys don't remember, but you know, you've probably heard the name. <laughs> Stephanie, I, I, one of the things I've really enjoyed at this conference, walk in the hallway, yeah. we say, you know, we're fortunate to live in a time that there's just so much going in, especially people like kind of the big engineering challenges and yeah. things we're solving. I'm curious, what, what's getting you excited? Uh, what, what makes kind of where we are now in technology so important? Yeah, I, th I, think, I think one, I'm very excited about the open, right? The ability for everyone to participate um, has, has created such a, it's almost a much more rapid innovation cycle than we've ever seen before. And clearly my focus is on Linux, right? So open place key to that. I think also we're seeing the culmination of um, a change in the workloads that are running on Linux. So that's key, right? I think that's, that's very interesting. We're seeing clients take Linux and the workloads that run on Linux to new levels, and that's driving new requirements on the infrastructure. So uh, we're coming back to a place where, for Linux workloads, infrastructure matters because the workloads are driving that kind of requirement onto the infrastructure. And so as we come in, our, our ecosystem has matured. It's the right time for Linux on power. It's great. Well, listen, good luck with the uh, yeah. keynote tomorrow. Thanks so Very much for coming good. back in theCUBE. It was great Thanks to meet you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from IBM Edge in Las Vegas. Right back.